Should you back Maladim by Battle Systems? Yes, and this is a game that I'm also backing and I've been waiting for ages for this campaign to launch. Let me tell you why, because my name is Sam, this is Should You Back It, and I'm here to help you crowdfund with confidence. Maladim is a fantasy miniatures board game for 1-6 to six players that will take you anywhere between 45 to 120 minutes to play and whose core pledge will set you back £99 and it's being made by the folks over at Battle Systems. The campaign has two halves to it, a game half and a terrain half, but we're going to talk about the game half first. In Maladim you will control one or a band of adventurers who've set out to find their fortune by pillaging and plundering the ancient dungeons of Enveron. This is set in the same game world as Core Space, the sci-fi board game from Battle Systems, but while this looks like a historic medieval setting, it's actually set further into the future of the Core Space universe. Society has collapsed, things have kind of gone to pot, and the world has regressed to a certain extent, kind of what we see in other pop culture settings like with Horizon Zero Dawn. While you loot, you'll find strange and interesting weapons that are from a technological age gone by, which to you seem almost magical in nature. After you've plundered a dungeon, you'll get to spend XP to level up your character, make them even more powerful, and head right back in to get even juicier loot. The core set of the game ships with seven base heroes for you to choose from, each with their own specialties. There are a slew of enemies, more of which are already being unlocked via stretch goals as I record this video, and you equally get a neoprene mat and enough terrain to outfit a 2x2 two two foot board, which is the area the game plays on. By the way, if you want to check out the campaign for this game, I do have a link for it down in the video description and in the pinned comments, so do feel free to go and check it out there to see what I'm talking about. So that's a brief overview of the game, but what about the people behind the game Battle Systems? You see, in each of these Should You Back It videos, I do a risk assessment on the company or person or peoples making the game and take a look into the games they've previously made to see how they ran them in order for us to gain an understanding and a glimpse into what our experience could be as a backer. This is Battle Systems' eighth Kickstarter campaign and all of their previous campaigns have already fully shipped fully completed and are all in the hands of backers, with their last campaign, Core Space Firstborn, being fully completed and shipped in March of 2022. Pouring through their past campaigns, it was hard to find many negative or alarming comments. The reviews on BoardGameGeek are largely positive, with the Core Space series landing around the 8.5 region, with very few reviews dropping below a 7 or 8 rating. Communications wise, on Firstborn they were updating backers on average between months a month to once every other month. Very similar for the terrain kickstarters too, everything appears from my research to say that you'll have a positive experience and receive a really good game. It was actually quite frustrating, I tried to find some negative comments and I, it was hard just to find them. Uh, so fair play Battle Systems for making this a hard risk assessment for me. What I will say though, just for balance so that not everything is positive, one thing I did see that wasn't wholly positive was that they weren't overly active in their Kickstarter comments section, if at all. There are a few comments they respond to and do give helpful and detailed responses, but for the most part queries are being answered by the hive mind of the backers. The Battle Systems team is smaller and I recognise that when you do have a smaller team you've really got to hone in on the areas you want to nail customer communication and service it in. And they are active in the game's Facebook groups and through email, but I'd love to see this improve a little bit with Maladim as it could give the impression that they are quite absent when I don't think that this is the case at all. I think they are active in communicating with their backers. In most cases, people were recommending backers reach out via email to Battle Systems with issues or concerns and that their customer service was brilliant when emailed. All in all, I would give Battle Systems a green rating when it comes to risk assessment. I believe you're going to get your game with minimum delays and that communication will be strong up until fulfilment, at which point you'll need to get yourself into an online community for the game or contact Battle Systems directly if you have any issues. So why do I think you should back this game? Well, this is one of the few titles I've covered that I've actually physically played. I got to play a game of this at UK Games Expo last year and Ben, who was with me and myself, had a ton of fun. Ben and I both own and occasionally play Zombicide. I'm a big fan of dungeon crawlers and games with miniatures in them and Maladum felt like an evolution of the games we'd experienced. One of the big things that I love about Maladim is that players can actually play off one another and have their actions chained together in a meaningful way. 
Unlike in games like Zombicide, where it sometimes feels like you're just individual characters who are just happening to work together, in Maladum you feel like a team, and you have the ability to effectively and powerfully work together. One example of this was where I was playing as a barbarian fighter style character. I was at the end of a corridor, Ben was ranged uh, and he had to try and get to the exit. There was tons of enemies between us and I'd managed to pick up some combination of items that enabled me to basically go into a fury, charge down the corridor of low level enemies, just carving them up as I went. Every enemy I killed made me more powerful and made it more easy for me to kill the next enemy and that just chained and chained and chained. I ended up clearing the way for Ben to escape. I think I had like one wound left and the game really lends itself really well to these cinematic moments that just left an impact on us after the convention. I think actually in the moment the developer said that the, the way that I chained those items had actually broken the game and was way too powerful. They threatened to nerf that. I hope they didn't because it was really cool and um, sometimes slightly broken items that make you feel really cool and powerful are nice to have in board games. But we'll see, maybe Battle Systems will let us know if they nerf those items. One of the big draws of this game is also the terrain. There is a terrain plage which I haven't even gotten to talk about because there's so much in this campaign, but in the core plage for the game you'll get a full table's worth of pre-painted, I believe it's Plasticard, which is super durable and easy to put together and just really elevates the experience of playing the game. Obviously, you can take this terrain and use it for other games, whether they be your miniature skirmish games or even your tabletop RPG sessions. I have some Battle Systems terrain myself. It is durable. It's lasted between like two or three house moves and it's still all piecing together really nicely. So definitely recommend it as someone who also has some Battle Systems terrain in their collection. If you're someone who likes dungeon crawlers or are looking to add a dungeon crawler game to your collection, I think you'll love this game. If you play tabletop RPGs or miniature skirmish games, I think there's a lot to love with the terrain pledges and are definitely worth checking out. Equally, I think if you are a fan of miniature war games, of skirmish games, I think Maladum and the Core Spear series is a great way to transition some of your friends or even yourself into more of the board game space. For me, I am a dungeon crawler fan. I'm a sucker for minis. And after having had the benefit of being able to play this in person, it's a game I know I'll get a lot of enjoyment out of. And it's a game that even after a year, after only playing it once, it has stuck in my memory. It's been cemented in there for me and Ben, which for me is a testament to how good I think this game is. As always though, this is just my recommendation, but hopefully you feel a little bit more informed. If you find it helpful, I'd love it if you could subscribe. I'm a new channel trying to cover the games I think you're interested in, and your support really does help.